Maria Huzarska dla KTV. Dzisiaj rozmawiamy z Jamesem Hopkinem, nowelistą, krytykiem, autorem, pisarzem, dziennikarzem, który właśnie przyjechał na Off Camera Festival do Krakowa. Hello, nice to meet you in Krakow. Dzień dobry, nice to meet you too. How are you feeling today? Very good. It's a beautiful day in Krakow and apart from being nearly homeless here, I'm having a lovely day. Why are you homeless? Um, well, despite the fact that I've been coming to Krakow for, I don't know, 17 years, I didn't come here to buy property, so I don't have a flat here, so like everyone else. And during a, during a busy spring, it's hard to find somewhere because of, look at all these people and tourists and everybody wants to come to this lovely city in May. Crowded, right? It's get, getting a little bit crowded now, but I know some secret places, so it's okay. But unfortunately, I don't know any secret flats. So what is your story, I mean, relationship with Krakow? I first came in 1998 and I was actually in Wrocław at the university. We did kind of exchange. I was studying European literature at Masters at the UEA in Norwich and we did a kind of two or three week exchange with postgraduate students from Wrocław University and I went there, stayed in Wrocław, winter 1998. I'd never been anywhere so cold in my life. It was about minus 20 when I went there, when I arrived at night because I flew to Warsaw and had to get a train to Wrocław, which was late and broke down, and it was a crazy story. But when I was in Wrocław, they said, you must go to Krakow, this is the jewel of Poland, you, you, will, you have never seen anything like it. So I came for a weekend, of course, also in, in winter, and I was completely enchanted. Of course, it's before there were any other English or British people here, so I'm right from the beginning, I felt a special affinity relationship with this city. I felt if somewhere I could come and write, somewhere I could live, meet people, I just felt something special about the city. So when did you write uh, Winter Underwater? Then I could, so I went back to the UK, I finished my PhD. Actually, the first step was, I wrote a short story called Even the Crows Say Krakow. Nawet wrony mówią Krakow. This won a major competition in the UK, a national competition for £5,000. And as a result, lots of agents and publishers started ringing me up. So I signed to Picador the year after that for a three-book deal. And um, the first novel, Winter Underwater, or Zatopio Nezima, uh, published by Znak in Poland, is set in Kraków, Wrocław and Berlin. And a lot of it is about that first trip I made in 1998 but I had to invent characters and why they would come here so there's a different story they don't come here to study. So you are a novelist and writing for Guardian? Mm -hmm. The Guardian newspaper in the UK so I've also written and I also uh, I write cultural articles so I've interviewed Chimborska in Krakow, I've written about the off-camera film festival, I've written about the Krakow documentary and short film festival Comrade Festival, the Miwash Festival. I guess that's one of the reasons why they gave me this bench because I've I've kind it's of written about. Bench. Yeah, I've kind of promoted Polish culture in the Guardian newspaper since '98, and I've written travel features for the Independent, for Lonely Planet, for lots of other newspapers about Krakow. So that's it's probably all my fault that I can no longer find a flat here because I promoted it so much in in the UK as a cultural and beautiful place to come. Tell me about uh, this uh, off-camera uh, festival. Mm. How do you find uh, films at the festival? I think it's getting uh, better and better. I've, I've been three or four times. I've written about it three times. For The Guardian, Anja Shebiotowska is a fantastic programmer. This year the competition films were of really high quality. What I love about it on a personal level is that you get an absolute chance to meet the directors and actors, which say, for example, at a festival in the UK, They would be hidden away. You wouldn't. You would have to, you know, apply for special permits. You'd get your 10 minutes with a director. But for example, on the gala on Saturday night, I sat next to, spoke to, and ended up speaking to for about an hour the the American Iranian director of Appropriate Behavior, Desire, and that would not be. You know, she's from New York. She lives in a nice area of London. I would never meet her in the UK. So I think not only do you get great films at the Opus camera or just off camera now because it's sponsored by PKO I think but you also get this access to the to the directors and actors and the film community that you don't get at their larger festivals so that's really nice well yeah that can change they were all the films in the com competition as I said were, were were strong so any one of them could have won 
But I think my personal favourite was non-competition film, but was in, or it may have been in the Polish competition, but it was Ukrainian-Russian-Polish collaboration called Under Electric Clouds, which was two and a half hours long, was very slow, intellectual, like a, but set in 2020, but it felt like a 19th century Russian novel. And for me, I, I really loved this film, and that was a disco the, the discovery. Although I, I liked 10 or 11 film, other films that I saw, this one was a real special find for me. And uh, I spoke to Anya about it on Saturday, and she said, I'm pleased you liked it, because I only found two other people who did so far, herself included. So I was pleased that we had this special interest in this film. How do you find Krakow? How is it changing? Uh, on which level? Or? Well, apart from on the, on the level where it's much more difficult to find accommodation. <laughs> yes, and obviously when I was first here there were not so many uh, foreigners or visitors and certainly not, in, I, I hardly heard any English on the street. And so it becomes busier and in many ways it's become better. The infrastructure and look at all this building going on around. They're relaying the ring road and Svente Anna here and you know, the infrastructure is improving, but with that, things are lost. You know, lots of little old shops in the centre, of course, have had to go. I think Planta, actually, is one of my favourite places. Yeah, not just for sleeping, but uh, for cycling. I'm a keen cyclist, and um, whichever city I, I'm in around Europe, I always try to rent or borrow, never steal, a bicycle. And um, with Planta, it's uh, fantastic. I think it's about three and a half kilometres all the way around. But I do four or five times round, and I love Planta because the different areas are just like different districts of a city. In some areas you have the students, some areas you have the kind of punk people, then you have a whole area of kind of nuns or tourists or people reading books, and it seems as you cycle around each time, you can feel like the whole of crack of human life is here. I like cycling down by the river, going to Domniki or Kazimierz or other parts to get away from the centre, especially at the weekend. So if you have a bicycle and the weather is good. Are you going to write uh, something about Krakow as well in yes, the future? I think so. I, I, my last travel article about Krakow was for The Guardian 2012, so that needs updating because there's places opening and closing all the time in the centre and uh, areas like um, Domniki where there's nice cafe I went to for the first time over the weekend. Is it Confederatia? Which is very nice, kind of European feeling, boho chic place in Demniki. It was nice there. So these new places for me, so I'd like to update that article. But fiction wise, definitely feel a new story coming on, a new short story about Krakow. Maybe about how, how it's changed and some characters who've maybe lived here that whole time and what's happened to them would be interesting. What do you think about atmosphere? Is more foreign people in Krakow? Do you find more cultural mix? Yeah, if, if it's, um, I mean, everybody said there's more Spanish who come out over here to work here, and I've seen more British people working here, then it becomes more international. But tourists don't make it more international because they're just here for a few days. So, thank you for the interview. You're welcome, good thank luck you. With, uh, looking for a place for sleep. Dziękuję bardzo. Mam nadzieję. Mam nadzieję. I hope not on this bench. <laughs> Thank you.